Hello, my name is Christy Mudd. I am a person in long-term recovery and I have eight and a half years of sobriety. Uh, today, I work in behavioral health, so I'm able to help others help themselves and I love being able to do what I do. Well, thanks so much for coming out and joining us. Uh, we really appreciate you taking your time. Can you start off by telling us a bit about your childhood? Yeah, so um, I am the baby. Uh, I have a sister that's five years older than I am. Uh, growing up as a, as a child, uh, home life was great. Um, my, my parents divorced uh, when I was like one years old. Um, but I had um, a dad there where uh, he was a man that he didn't have to be. And uh, so growing up at home, things were great. Um, mom worked, um, family was loving. There wasn't drug use going on at home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, childhood was pretty good. Okay, great. Yeah. So when was your first time experimenting with alcohol and or drugs? So um, my first time, uh, I was about third grade, so about nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, and there was some wine coolers in the fridge that were mom's. And uh, I remember uh, one of my best friends till today, uh, Beth, her and I, we stole some of those wine coolers. Uh, and then uh, a, there was a relative that smoked um, those misty 120s, those long <laughs> skinny Super cigarettes. Long. Yeah, 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 like ultra light, you know, ultra, ultra. Uh, so we would steal those and go in the woods and sneak uh, and drink the wine coolers and, you know, smoke the, the long air. Um, so yeah, it, it was nine years old when I started experimenting. So can you share with us some of the, how your disease progressed? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'd have those little drinks here and there. I remember that kind of carrying on, you know, um, but it was never really anything big. Um, I, I remember going into high school, uh, I had maybe stolen a few cigarettes, you know, drank a beer here and there. Um, when I got, when I turned, but right before I turned 18, um, I hurt my back. I was working at a convenience store mm -hmm. and um, back injury. So I was took off work, started seeing pain management. Pain management started prescribing the opiates. Um, Right when I turned 18, I was being prescribed morphine, uh, morphine patches, um, Percocets for breakthrough, Xanax. They gave me uh, Ambien for sleep. Then they added methadone in there for chronic pain. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I, I would say my dad referred like I was up in space, you know? So I remember my dad going to the doctor appointment with me the very next one, like, what the hell are you giving my daughter like, you know? Um, and they thought for sure I was abused and that was all of what that doctor was giving me. So I, I kept taking that for a few years. Well, you know what happens? I got addicted to the opiates mm -hmm. and then it became that I wasn't working because the back was screwed up. Mm -hmm. So then it was like I was using all day just that's yeah in the midst of all that um, I got pregnant with my son so his my son's father and I um, that was my first love we ended up getting back in touch with each other again mm -hmm. for a short time got pregnant with my son uh, and I was on depot shot from 16 till this time and I was a week late getting that shot and I got pregnant with Dylan. Um, and honestly, I never wanted kids. So when I got pregnant, it was a shock. Like, and the craziest thing, I went to my doctor when I found out I was pregnant and my the OB doc, mm -hmm. and I was open and honest with him about all this medicine I had been on, that I had been abusing, that I had been prescribed, and you know, that I was a mess. Um, so he helped me with some meds, you know, to, to like comfort because mm -hmm. you got to be careful being pregnant. Right. And then I was only allowed to take one Tylenol three a day if I absolutely needed it because of the, you know, the baby. Right. So through my whole pregnancy, I didn't abuse 
no drugs. I, um, it, it, it was strange. I did none. So then after I had him and, and I gave birth to him and so, and I had, I didn't have too many issues during, uh, labor and delivery. Um, but I had some issues and then he ripped, I ripped from giving mm -hmm. birth. Um, so then, you know, when you get your, in the hospital and you have, then they give you all this pain medicine. Mm -hmm. And when I left the hospital, I was prescribed Percocets. Um, and I, I would say probably a week into it, I felt, I felt it. It was like a whole, like, grab me right up. And I was back up and I was right back in it. Yep. It reignites it right from the beginning, right from where you it left off. It was crazy. Yes. It, because if you would have told me that then, I would have said, you're a damn liar. There's no way. But that's exactly, yeah. Um, you know, and then it got to where um, I started, um, my mom has legit medical problems. Mm -hmm has been given medicine for years. I never had touched her medicine. I had never took it to that point. After that, it got to where I found myself where I was stealing her pills. Um, and then when I was afraid that I couldn't get to them and I would get caught, I would go and lie and manipulate of, oh, I was hurting so bad and, you know, and like, <coughs> oh, I don't have, can, I, can you help me out? You know, mm -hmm. playing that card. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it was, it was horrible, but it, it, at the same time of that, it was almost like you feel like your, your, your whole self is hijacked, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and it's kind of like, um, you know, I refer to a lot of times as a demon, you know, um, and then, um, I had some good friends introduce me to a super duper pain reliever. Mm -hmm. Um, when it was laid out on the table and I looked at it, I would have, I could have swore that it would have been like an oxy crushed up already. Mm -hmm. You know, they mm -hmm. was my friends. They cared. Right. The minute I snorted it up, I fell in love all over again, times a hundred. Mm -hmm. And then I felt disgusting at the very same second. Mm -hmm. And later I found out that I had snorted heroin and I had no clue. Wow. And I was grabbed up even harder. The, Like I said, I feel like it just completely hijacked me out of my body and it was completely on autopilot. And, you know, in the midst of all this too, um, when my son was 14 months old, I met the guy that I'm still with today. Mm -hmm. um, and I had got him started on the pain medicine. I'm like, he knew about pain pills and all mm -hmm. that, you know. Um, I'm like, oh, you see these Percocets I got? Watch, I can crush them up and snort them. And well, he loved it too. So we spent the next um, 14 years. Um, yeah, because like I said, Dylan was about 14 months old. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so we went through hell and back and um, lost my dad in 09 and then um, it, it, we, I lost everything. The life with the heroin, just as much as I'm ashamed of it, at the same time, I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to go through that mm -hmm. um, because of who I am today. But I'll tell you, it takes you to dark places that I never dreamt that I would be at. Um, It's a, it's, it's a demon times a thousand of what that pain medicine is like. And it's, it's so scary because there's the stigma out there that people just don't, if you don't know, you don't know. Okay. Um, and we have a lot of that here in Claremont County. It's, it's sad, really. Um, we got that not my backyard mentality or, um, not my child. And, you know, so I share my, my story a lot with right. others to let them know, like, it don't discriminate. Right. Because my parents thought that same exact thing. Because mm -hmm. here's the thing. It was a choice at first. Mm -hmm. It was. 
When I first started taking those pills, it was a choice. But at the same time, I have this doctor write me prescriptions, mm -hmm. telling me that it is okay to take these medications, even telling my parents the same thing. That And, and why would you think not? You know, because at that time, you don't realize the kickback that these doctors got, you know, and it, it, it's disgusting. And at any point, did anybody ask you, do you have a history of substance use? Do you have, have you ever smoked marijuana before? Have you ever drank alcohol before? Nope. Any of that? Nope. Did anybody nope. at any point in time, when they cut you off, say, hey, you need to get some treatment to address these? No. no. I was left out for the wolves, you know, and, and I'm very really powerful. Right. And I'm really passionate about about that that subject right there because I see it happen even to today to this day at our hospitals. It, it's horrible because you know I look at people and I'm like, "There's somebody's daughter. There's somebody's brother." You know, like, yes. And, and if that was your child laying there, you wouldn't want them treated like that. And that really should be the standard, it, it like of care. That should that should be how right. everybody walks in, right? Whether you're eight years sober, eight minutes yeah. sober. You know, yeah. being and, and or in active addiction, still a human being. Yeah. I, I feel your passion yeah. too. So yeah. Yeah. it's uh, people need to be helped, and especially when they're out there asking for help, like that. Right. They, they, right. They, they want help, yeah. and and the fact there's so many points in your story along the way that there could have been different interventions. Obviously, this is your story, and this is your path yeah. of getting here. Yeah. But um, you know, there are places that people could have stepped up and said, "Hey, right. how about this?" So right. So what made you decide to, so you said three attempts at, at getting sober. What was different this last time that when, when you went up? I got in trouble. Okay. I was 35 years old and I got in trouble. Mm -hmm. I got in trouble with the law. And that was, I don't know how I stayed under the radar all those years. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I do know part of it was because I was legally prescribed. Right. And that played right into it. Um, so October 29th of 13 is my sobriety date. Mm -hmm. So in like December of 13, um, I got connected to this grassroots support group that here in Claremont County, Claremont County Solace. And it's um, a grassroots support group of, they support family, loved ones of folks that have struggled with addiction. Some of them have lost their children, um, some have not. Um, and then some of them are still actively, you know, some are in recovery. Mm -hmm. um, you know, COVID kind of busted that up some, but we're trying to get that back together because that family support's huge. Yes. Because that is exactly what started us having this outreach team here, this quick response team. Um, so, you know, I, I got, I got, you know, you, you was talking about the recovery house thing. Mm -hmm. um, so like no support. So I got out and I started meeting people and um, you know, letting people know that hey, hey, we got this support group here in Amelia. This it's a family support group. It's grassroots, and um, we ended up starting applying for a little grant through our Claremont County Mental Health and Recovery Board. Mm -hmm. And we would get four thousand a year, and we started helping. Um, we would go into the jail. We would go into uh, GCB runs the CAS program, which mm -hmm. is uh, a lockdown treatment in one wing of our. Claremont County Jail here. Uh, so we would go in there and we would connect with folks and we would sponsor them for two weeks to go to sober living down, you know, Hamilton County because that's all we had. Right. Um, and like I said, we go tour all those places to make sure where we're sending folks. Um, so then we started doing that and we just kept building. Mm -hmm. um, we started getting involved at the hospital, you know, and connecting with the folks that were overdosing and um, I built a good rapport with some of the doctors and the ER staff, and um, and then uh, I started meeting people, you know, in Cincinnati and different stuff. And um, I realized that they had this quick response team in Colerain Township, mm -hmm. Dan Malloy leads, mm -hmm. and I'm like, hmm. So somebody introduced me to Dan Malloy, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, talking with Greg and. Rhonda and some other people and I'm like, you know, I want to go up there and he said I can come up and shadow them and, you know, check out what they're doing and, you know, and so Greg was like, go ahead. So I went up there and I watched him for a while and I learned a thing or two, I brought that back to Claremont County and got connected to even more people here mm -hmm. and we got connected to the commissioner's office and Commissioner David Painter has been a huge, huge support of uh, this this whole peer thing here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he helped 
get us going too as far as because you know claremont county is a little bit we're a little bit behind uh, but we have come a long ways yeah. in five and a half years absolutely you know? well and it sounds like i mean you're earlier on you talked about action like my my word action speaks louder than words and that's really living and breathing in your your recovery i mean yeah from the education piece to connection i mean it's it's really alive yeah i'm just so final question what have you learned from your addiction everything everything because i'll tell you i thought i was a cocky teenager that thought she had it all figured out i you know and i didn't have a flipping clue mm -hmm. not yep. at all you know um i i didn't and and i'm still you know the the things every day is i learn something new you know but it's like I don't know it's like that breath of fresh air um you know and yeah i learned everything well i really appreciate you coming out today and sharing your story you you are a beacon of light and you have the action so you are willing to speak up and share and also have the action behind it yeah. and, and your story is definitely going to help many many people that are that are struggling and, and looking for figuring out a way how to f find their way out and in, into recovery and there's been just so many different pieces so yeah. thank you so much for coming thank out you. and joining us this thank was you. really spectacular thank you.